This is Dr. B. In this video, we're going to name Ca3, PO4, 2. The first thing we need to do is determine what type of compound we have. We can see calcium is a metal and the P and the O, phosphorus and oxygens, are nonmetals. Because we have a metal and then a group of nonmetals, that means we have what's called a ternary ionic compound. An example of that would be sodium nitrate, NaNO3. Now that we know we have a ternary ionic compound, we can follow the rules for naming ternary ionic compounds. We name the metal as it shows up on the periodic table. So Ca is just calcium. For the group of nonmetals, the PO4, you need to either remember that it's called phosphate or look it up on what's called a common ion table. As we look through the table, we can see that in the third column, we have the phosphate ion, PO4, three minus. So PO4 is called phosphate, and in this case, we just ignore the minus three. So we have our calcium already named, and we just looked up the PO4 that's called phosphate. So the name of this compound, the Ca3PO4-2, is calcium phosphate. We could also represent this, instead of a formula, as a Lewis structure. That might look something like this, where we have those three calcium ions and those two phosphate ions. And you can see there's three negative charges, just like we saw in the chart, the negative three. We could also write it like this, where we have the individual ions separated in the Lewis structure. Keep in mind that this is what we call a formula unit. It's one unit of a larger crystalline structure. When we have an ionic compound like calcium phosphate, there'll be lots of them together lined up in a crystal or if they dissolve in water, they'll spread out with the Ca2 pluses separate from the PO4 three minuses. So this is just a representation of how we might think of one unit of calcium phosphate. This is Dr. B with the name and Lewis structure for calcium phosphate, and thanks for watching.